how can you get the most out of your hybrid mirrorless camera for photo and video with great efficiency and only minimal equipment when you're out in the streets or while traveling? Replying to this question is my goal in this video. With a few years of experience shooting in this hybrid way, I finally got to a point where I have a set of parameters and custom mode that are very versatile, flexible, and let me capture everything I want pretty smoothly. I'll start by talking about the setup for video since there is already a photography settings video on the channel. It's a bit old, so I will come back to the photography settings later in the video and update everything. I know it might be a big chunky video talking technical stuff, but make sure to stick until the end to get the whole picture. If you only watch the first half where I talk about the settings and my custom mode, but don't go through the second half where I show you real situations, you will run into trouble and may be confused while recording clips, having your focus and exposure going all over the place. Anyway, I divided this video into sections so you can go at your pace and you can also come back to a section if you did not get it completely. I will be showing you the parameters on my Sony a7 IV, but you can replicate the principles on other Sony cameras, of course, and I'm sure you can also adapt to cameras from other brands. So now that these little disclaimers are out of the way, let's dive into the maze of the menu system. First and foremost, if you have followed the channel for a while, you may have noticed that I never include slow motion footage in my videos. The debate about what is cinematic and what is not is probably endless, and I don't really want to tap into that, but for me, and the style of videos I produce and like watching, standard 24 FPS footage is the best. What will make a short clip interesting is its composition and whether there is motion, could be from people or other elements uh, moving due to the wind for example. I much prefer 24 FPS normal speed footage because it is realistic. You can relate to it and believe that it's something that you are likely to see somewhere with your own eye, yet it can be very cinematic and convey a lot of emotions. I usually don't include camera movement either. I try to be as static as possible and compose my shots just like if they were photos essentially. You can think of them as photos with motion. That being out of the way, I shoot 24 FPS 4K XAVCS format. I have the Sony A7 IV, so I can also benefit from the 10 bit colors 422 at 100 megabits per second. I shoot also S Log 3 all the time. I was quite down to that first, but it is not very complicated and offers so much dynamic range and flexibility to adjust your clips in post production. You can also turn on the Log Footage View Assist, so what you see on the screen and on the viewfinder looks like a basic Rec 709 transformation LUT has been applied, which really helps. With the A7 IV, you cannot import your own LUT, but it does the job quite well, and with that, I barely or actually never use zebras. I trust my eye and what I see on the screen. I want to remind you that I'm a photographer and filmmaker making videos about my photography process for YouTube, so if I screw up, the only person let down in the whole story is only myself, so that explains why I have probably a more flexible approach and don't use all the tools and tricks to make sure that I have a perfect exposure all the time. I'm not delivering a wedding film or commercial to a brand, but still, with a lot of practice shooting with this method for myself, I became more skilled and less likely to uh, end up with unusable clips. So let's talk about my two custom modes and this point may trigger some more serious filmmaker out there because I'm using two semi-automatic modes. So with the A7 IV I can set them up and save on my custom 1 and custom 2 slots on the mode wheel. The one I logically use the most is based on the shutter priority mode, locking my shutter speed at 1 over 50 so I can stick to the 180 degree rule and the second one is based on the aperture priority mode. The use cases of this second mode are a bit more special or more so when I really do have to do a lot of compromises, but I'll explain everything in details later after going through my first and most commonly used setup. Custom 1. So, like I said before, I go on to the shutter priority mode and set my shutter speed at 1 over 50. My ISO are set to auto. By default, it will stay at ISO 800, which is the lowest for the S-Log3 on the A7 IV. If the camera needs more light, it will automatically start cranking up the ISO. And from experience, you can get usable footage all the way to 6400 ISO on the A7 IV. So that's where I set up my upper limit. Then since we are on the shutter priority mode, the aperture will fluctuate based on the conditions to match your desired exposure. In 99% of the cases, I'm using the multi-metering mode and push the exposure compensation to plus one in daytime and I leave it at zero at night. What I consider the most important for the footage I include in my videos is sticking to the 180 degree rule and I don't mind having my aperture going up to f8, f11 or f16. There is so much more to play with than just pocket to create interesting footage. Like I said earlier, composition, motion and treating your footage like moving photos will have a greater impact on the relevance of your footage than absolutely getting those shots at f2.8. Now when I use this mode, even if I don't care about my aperture going up a 
lot. I will still need some sort of ND or VND filter during daytime. Depending on the lens I'm using, I am switching between a 2 to 5 VND and a simple 4 step ND. It is enough to be able to stick to the 180 degree rule at daytime. You can skip on the filters only for the first few hours of the day and going into sunset, but during the big chunk of daytime, you will need to use an ND filter. In some occasions, when I'm walking around shooting only photos and carrying no ND filters, if I really want to take a quick video clip, I check what I can get when going lower in the ISO. You can go down to 200 with the a7 IV, and I have heard that the dynamic range is impacted. I don't know all the technicalities, but if it looks okay to me, I will still get the clip at 200 ISO, and in most cases, they turn out usable. It's better to have a usable clip while doing a little bit of compromise rather than having no clip at all, I think. I set my autofocus to AFC, my focus area to spot medium, standard IBIS is on, white balance on auto, and we are ready to save this first custom mode. I will talk about my custom buttons a bit later because, as you can see, I'm using a lot of automatic features, so it's really important to have some custom buttons to use and lock uh, your exposure, your white balance before starting to record. My second custom mode is based on the aperture priority mode, and I know I may offend some filmmakers out there because I'm just letting my shutter speed going all over the place, but like I said before, I use this mode only on very rare occasions when I have to do the maximum amount of compromise. It works well on scenes where there's not a lot of motion, when shooting some leaves moving very slowly, or a large scene where the people or cars moving are very far from my camera. I have realized that not sticking to the 180 degree rule in such scenario is not that big of a problem. And again, it's a mode that I would use in situations where I don't have my ND filter, for example, or let's be honest, if I'm lazy to put it on and know that I can get good results anyway. Just to digress a little bit, I'm making this video for someone like me who's trying to do photo and video at the same time in this hybrid way where getting the absolute 100% of the quality of the camera or the lens is not absolutely crucial. With a lot of practice and experience I've come up with this very efficient and flexible set of parameters that works well for the work I'm doing. By reading all the comments and messages I know that some of you want to do the same and the message I want to deliver with this video is really that you don't need all the gear, you don't need all the filters, you don't need all the step up rings or whatever to get decent looking results. The simple thought of having to carry all this gear, all these filters and all that really held me back at first and I don't want you to experience the same. With this minimal and flexible approach you can really get the good looking photos and videos with only limited equipment and limited burden. But now let's get back to this custom mode number two. By default I would set the aperture at f4 and adjust if necessary. My ISO are also set to auto starting from 800 up to 6400 and my shutter speed will vary to match the desired exposure. Just like custom mode one my metering is set to multi with the exposure compensation at plus one at daytime and I would lower it to zero at night. Autofocus settings are the same, AFC, the focus area to spot medium, standard IBIS activated, white balance set to auto and let's save this custom mode on the slot number two. So now let's talk about custom buttons since I'm using these modes with a lot of uh, automatic features like the exposure, white balance and focus. I need some buttons to lock them before starting to record so I can get really clean looking clips without my exposure and white balance going all over the place. Luckily on the a7 IV and actually on most Sony cameras, despite being not very pretty, there are amazing tools with plenty of customizable buttons. For video I set my AEL button to AEL toggle. By simply pressing that button once my exposure will be locked. If I want to unlock it I just press again once on the button. You can see the little star thing on the screen telling you that the exposure is locked. I set my AF on button to autofocus, manual focus, select or toggle. I can wait that my camera acquire focus where I want, either by pointing to the desired area of the scene, locking focus and recomposing, or moving my focus point with the joystick or the touch screen and locking focus. Same if I want to unlock my focus, I just have to press once again on the AF on button. Then I set the auto white balance lock toggle on the rear wheel down button. This one is crucial to have in difficult shooting conditions, but out of these three uh, custom buttons, Buttons, it is the button I use the least. In normal daylight scene, the camera does a great job at setting the white balance, but as soon as there is artificial lights or when I'm recording the talking headshot, I lock my white balance before recording. Just like the other buttons, one press to lock the white balance, another press to unlock it. So those are the three buttons I use the most. They are very accessible with one hand, and you see that not having custom buttons on the lens is not very a big deal. With the a7 IV and its large megapixel count, you can also take advantage of the Super 35mm crop mode. It allows you to have a 1.5 time crop while keeping the same 4K resolution. With that, if you are shooting with a prime lens, you have more versatility and can get more different
different style of shots. A 35 mm prime lens can become a 50 mm with just one click. I assigned the Super 35 crop toggle on the center button. You can get in and out by just pressing once. That's pretty much everything I use in terms of custom buttons for video. If you saw something different on screen, you can ignore them because I really only use those four custom buttons. I still have my C1 and C2 to change my focus area and white balance, but honestly, I really never touch them. So now I'll show you how I use these different modes in different situations, like practically on the field. So this first situation is with custom mode one with the ND or AVND on me, which is the ideal scenario. I slap my filter on and switch the video mode. I have a look at the exposure to see if it's okay. If I'm happy with what I see, I lock my exposure using the AR button and I move my focus point where I want or keep it in center and move my camera accordingly. Once I acquired focus, I can lock it by pressing the AF on button and final step only if needed, I would lock my white balance. Again, in a tricky scenario, it's a game of pointing the camera where it makes more sense. And once you're happy with what you see, you can lock the white balance. This seems like a lot, but it usually takes less than five seconds to lock exposure, focus and white balance and be ready to shoot. Last thing you have to do is press record. The benefits of using custom mode is that once you get back to photography or move to custom mode two and back to custom mode one, you will always start clean. Everything will be back to what you have saved, which really streamlined the whole process without having to figure out where you left the settings the previous time you recorded the clip. You will always start from a very solid base and just do minor adjustments to be ready to shoot. So now on this second situation, I'm not carrying an ND filter with me. And when I don't have an ND filter and still want to shoot video, I have two options. First one is to use this custom mode one, but lowering the ISO to 200, which is non-native and losing a touch of details. If this little difference in ISO was just what was missing to get a proper exposure, I just have to repeat the same steps as I explained before to be ready to shoot. Then in this third situation, I don't have an ND filter and lowering the ISO to 200 is not enough. So my final option is switching to my custom mode 2 and let the shutter speed go up and break the 180 degree rule. Here I also have more freedom to adjust my f-stop depending on the creative choice but like I said before this final option is really when I'm compromising to the maximum and will look great only if there is not too much motion in the scene I'm shooting. I know some people would not really notice the weird effect of high shutter speed but as much as possible I try to not having clips like that in my videos. In terms of filters. I'm using the Nisi Swift system that allows me to take on and off the filter really easy. I only have it in a big 82mm filter thread so when using smaller lenses I often grab my 67mm Polar Pro VND 2 to 5 stops. It is more cumbersome to screw on and off so that's why sometimes I also just place it in front of my lens, hold it trying not to put my fingers in the frame and once I'm done I put it back in my pocket. I like to record for at least 10 seconds every time so I have enough room to play with when editing. I can remove a few frames at the start and at the finish when I'm not very um, stable holding my camera for example. Sometimes I record for more than 10 seconds of course for example when the, the scene I'm shooting unfolds in a very interesting way but that's common sense I guess. For the photography section of this video I will try to be more concise. I will just um, show you my settings without really explaining why I do certain things but feel free to comment if you have questions and I try to uh, to uh, come back to you. So 99.9% .9 of the time I'm shooting in aperture priority mode so we'll start from there. Regardless of the lens I'm using I set my aperture to f4. It's a good starting point. I actually shoot a lot at f4. I think it's also somewhere easy to go lower or higher in my f-stop very quickly. I set my ISO to auto from 100 to uh, 6400. This goes hand in hand with the minimum shutter speed that I set to 250 of a second most of the time but if I'm shooting at daytime and shooting a lot in motion crossing people etc I may set it at 500 of a second and then when there is less light at sunrise or sunset for example I set it at 125 of a second and even lower than that when shooting at night I set my autofocus to AFC and my focus area depends a bit on what I shoot I like the zone spot medium and tracking spot medium when shooting more quietly finding a scene and waiting for someone to come in I prefer the spot focus but when trying to capture people while walking I rely more on the autofocus and in such case I would prefer the zone focus area. White balance is set to auto, my metering to multi and my exposure compensation at minus 0.3. I adjust it depending on the scene if needed. At night there is some situations where you would lower it to minus 1 or lower than that actually but you have to judge that case by case looking at the screen or the EVF. And finally my drive mode is usually set at mid. Then in terms of custom buttons it's the same as video so I can lock exposure and white balance if I want. The only difference is 
the focus. I use the back button focus method, so I disable the focus with the shutter and set my AF on to AF on. Doing so, you benefit both from the AFC when you keep your AF on button pressed while shooting and almost like a manual focus or AFS when focusing beforehand and shooting without the AF on button pressed. Ah, and of course, I shoot RAW, not only on my Sony camera, but also on my Ricoh and my Fuji. I love editing my photos and having the flexibility that RAW files offer. I'm using my presets to edit all my pictures, so if you are interested in having your photos looking like mine, you can head over to my website and get my presets. Link will be in the description. Then last step, don't forget to save the custom settings. I actually save it to both the slot 1 and slot 2. Doing so allow me to be sure that I will be in the right photography mode when I come back from video. As we saw earlier, there are situations where I would use my video custom mode 2. And when switching back to photography, regardless of what mode I use for video, I will get back on my feet and have my usual photography mode ready. The remaining 1.01% of the time, I shoot in shutter priority mode when the shutter speed is the creative element of a photo, doing some panning shots or longer exposure, for example. I keep everything the same, expect that this custom set is based on the shutter priority mode. I set it at 1 20th of a second, as this is a good starting point to make panning or blurry shots. Now that our custom mode are set up, we are good to go. But still, there's one last thing I wanted to mention is the My Menu section and what items I put in it. So my philosophy with this custom mode is to have a good foundation to work with, but that doesn't mean that they are set in stone and I will never change them. And actually, quite often, I'm changing a few things and resave them. For example, when I plan to go to do night street photography for two, three hours, I may prefer having the f-stop, so the aperture set at the minimum that my uh, lens can go, and maybe my minimum shutter speed at one over 125th or even lower than that. And so here comes the My Menu, where I can actually save that function to save new custom mode into the My Menu, so I can have really quick access to it. So within this example of a night street photography, I would quickly adjust my settings, resave my custom mode before heading out to shoot, and then my whole photo session will be a very much smoother. It takes only about one or two minutes and I'm sure you will be very happy not having to change manually your settings every time you switch between photography and video mode. My video custom modes are less likely to change compared to my photography custom mode but still if we get back to this uh, night street photography example I would prefer having my exposure compensation at zero even for my uh, video so I will quickly save that and then it saves me a lot of hassle of uh, manually adjusting every time I get back to video. Second item I put here is the AF with shutter. When I'm shooting portraits, I prefer not having to press the AF on button. I trust my autofocus and the back button focusing technique really isn't that necessary for a portrait shoot. We finally reached the end of this video. I've been asked numerous times to make a video talking about my uh, my settings for hybrid shooting, shooting both photo and video, and uh, I know it could be a valuable information for you, so I finally made it happen and I hope it will be useful to you. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.